up, friends? Ginny D here with another video about not being a total anus to each other while playing D&D. It's so weird how these are always my most controversial videos. I feel like all I ever say is, hey, why don't you try being nice to each other? Today, I want to wade into the ongoing discourse about adversarial DMs. I know this is a topic that everybody has talked about, and honestly, I understand why. There's this mindset that is so common that it's an ongoing joke in D&D circles, and that mindset is that the DM is out to get players, that they take perverse joy in torturing and killing characters, that their dream is to make players stress cry at the table, that they didn't come here to make friends. They came here to be America's next top model. It's no secret that we're in the middle of a new wave of tabletop gaming culture right now. This new wave is more diverse, more socially conscious, and recognizes that ultimately, both the players and the DM are playing a game for fun. And even though the DM controls your enemies, the DM as a person, out of character, is on your side. They want you to have fun, and in most cases, they do want you to succeed. Now, I don't want to fall into the trap of pitting old players versus new players, turning this into a generational issue, and God forbid, acting like nobody ever played thoughtful, empathetic games before now. But the reason why this empathetic mindset is associated with this new wave is that that adversarial DM mindset that was sort of universally accepted as at least a relatable joke, if not an actual expectation for gameplay, is now being widely challenged. I found this scathing blog just condemning what they called the buddy DM, a DM who publicly opposes adversarial DMs and then proceeds to spoil their players and bend over backwards to make them feel like heroes, with the end result of never challenging them and ultimately running a boring, easy game. I'm gonna be honest, I think this dichotomy is made up. Sure, there are DMs who are too lax, and there are DMs who are too aggressive, because we're humans, and this is a game that can be played an infinite variety of ways. But setting up this black and white conflict between wimpy DMs who are afraid to challenge their players and asshole DMs who want to drink their players' tears, it's not real. Most people don't fall into either of those camps, and when people do, I think we all agree that both make for a poor game experience. Both sides of that are bad faith arguments. The fact is that there needs to be a balance. It's a DM's job to oppose their players, but it's also possible to make your players miserable by taking that too far. In the end, this isn't a pitched battle between two stances, it's most DMs trying to figure out where they should fall on that spectrum and sometimes choosing wrong. So today, I don't want to take a side in this weird Mac versus PC, Star Trek versus Star Wars made up two-sided conflict. Instead, I want to talk about identifying that middle ground where DMs get to be a great enemy for their characters without becoming the enemy of the players. Let's do it! So how do you draw that line between being the character's enemy and being the player's enemy? After all, it's the DM's job to oppose players by using monsters and NPCs to fight them, trick them, lie to them, manipulate them, and sometimes even kill them or the people they love. DMs keep secrets from players, put obstacles into their paths, and introduce storylines that might make characters sad or angry or hurt. All of this is the role of the DM. And sometimes this stuff can upset players, but that doesn't necessarily mean the DM is crossing a line. Roleplay can be emotional, and people are unpredictable. That said, sometimes DMs do things that seem more like they're opposing the players than the characters. Maybe they bring personal issues that they have with the player into the game, introduce content that they know is triggering or harmful to their players, or break trust with players in some way, like agreeing to do or not do something and then violating that promise. I think the key question to ask is, are you punishing the character for their actions or the player? Let's say a character character is rude or deceptive to a powerful NPC. Punishing the character would look like guards beating them up or throwing them in jail. Or maybe the character has some privileges taken away, like they're banned from the city, or the NPC takes a valuable item from them. These are reasonable in-game consequences for an in-game choice. If there weren't consequences like these, it would honestly be kind of hard to play a game like D&D. The whole point of gameplay is interacting with the world and seeing what happens, and sometimes what happens happens is bad. It would be boring if that was never true. But let's say that a player pushes back on a ruling, or finds a loophole in an encounter that the DM didn't plan for, and the DM is frustrated and decides to make a monster target them, or make their weapon cursed, or make the berries that they pick poison. None of these things are necessarily bad DM moves, as long as they make sense in the game. But if the DM is doing them to punish a player for out-of-game actions, those consequences aren't related to the crime. Killing a piece 
NPC because the DM has beef with the player, that's not D&D, that's just standard issue pettiness. I have a friend who was frustrated in their game because it seemed like every time their character got a cool item or a cool ability, the DM went out of their way to find some way to shut it down. They spent all their savings on a new magic item, the DM destroyed it. They learned a new spell, the DM made all of the enemies immune to it. They felt like the DM didn't want them to ever succeed at anything. And if they strategized or worked hard to gain an inch, the DM would just use their godlike power to take it away again. They felt like they had no control. This ultimately made it so that my friend didn't enjoy this game at all, and they ended up leaving it. The power of being the DM can be so easily abused. You can literally control everything except for the player character's actions, which means that if you're not careful, you can make it so that the player's actions don't really mean anything. That's a quick ticket to a game that only the DM enjoys. Good DMs know that the bad guys are out to get players, but the world isn't. Of course an enemy is gonna try and kill them, and sometimes accidents happen. Maybe a player picks some berries, fails their nature check, and eats some poison. But if you find that you're waiting until your player fails the nature check and then deciding the berries are poison, or if you set an impossibly high DC because you want them to fail their nature check, this is when I think you need to start asking yourself if you're playing fair. I also think a good rule of thumb is that character conflicts get hashed out in-game, but player conflicts should be hashed out as yourselves, as real people, not passive-aggressively through gameplay. I often see DMs complaining on Facebook groups or on Reddit about problem players, doing things like intentionally metagaming, or missing sessions without giving a heads up, or fudging dice rolls, and often people will recommend that these crimes be punished in-game by doing something to their character. I just want to make sure we all agree that that's not healthy conflict resolution, and it's not going to solve the problem. Those kinds of solutions really will only serve to generate more conflict and build up resentment. Ugh, I can't find my potion making notes. I think this is due tomorrow, but I didn't write it down. And I have that incantations paper. Or was it an arcana paper? Ugh, it's so hard to keep up. Oh. <coughs> Sounds like you need a better way to get organized. How about the hero's journal? Oh my god, I've really lost it. Stress has finally broken my mind. The Hero's Journal is more than just a personal planner. It's a 90-day productivity workbook that uses the framing of a fantastical adventure to help you prioritize, identify obstacles, and approach your goals with a positive attitude. And I could just start using it right now? Yep, it's undated, so you can take your journey at your own pace. There are weekly checkpoints and sections dedicated to reflection to encourage you to make sure your systems are working for you. Here, take a look. <gasps> wow. It's so pretty. Oh, I love the cute artwork. It's great for coloring too, if you're artistically inclined. This is the Astoria Magic Academy Journal, which is themed around a magic boarding school. They also have the original Heroes Journal, which is more of an epic quest kind of thing. Thank you, weird face. This will definitely help. But I do need to finish this potion, so do you think you could not be floating around in there? Just work around me. Get yours for 10% off at the link in the description. Or use the code GinnyD to claim your discount. Ugh. And follow Heroes Journal on social media for <coughs> more inspiration. Oh god, please not Eye of Newt. You know, it's gonna come up in the comments, so I'm just gonna address it head on. There's a whole subset of players, particularly people who have been playing D&D for a long time, who think that this new wave of more communicative, more socially conscious D&D players are just being wimps, and maybe aren't cut out for a game like D&D. Anytime I so much as mention safety tools, there are people in my comments letting me know that safety tools are useless or annoying, that they take the fun out of D&D, that it's just a game, and anyone who might be a emotionally affected by the stuff that happens at the table just needs to toughen up or play something else. That death and suffering are an inherent part of D&D. So first of all, I think those people are assholes. <laughs> it's really not that hard to have empathy for people. And just because you don't have triggers or trauma or phobias doesn't mean that everyone else is just making it up for attention. But I do sometimes see good faith opposition to the concept of a DM being too nice or overly careful of upsetting players. And that pushback usually comes 
in the form of reminding people that the DM's job is not to make everyone happy. And I agree with that. Being kind to your players doesn't mean letting them do anything they want without consequences, or letting them rewrite the rules of the game, or making their characters functionally immortal, or generally avoiding any in-game conflict. Suffering, danger, risk, and yes, death are all parts of the game. In fact, the idea of character death as an option is one of the things that makes me excited and invested in D&D. There are real stakes for my decisions, and that's dramatic and interesting. And the thing is, I don't think very many people are actually arguing that there should be no death in D&D. I think that's another straw man argument. Instead, most of what I've seen said is that a lot of players want death to be taken pretty seriously, that character death can be impactful, and that after investing a lot of time and emotional energy into a character, it can be really painful to see them die over a few shitty dice rolls or a poorly balanced encounter. Character death can be a really enjoyable part of a story. Dying heroically, dying to achieve something, dying in a way that's true to your character and influences the story, that can be really fucking cool. This is yet another issue of communication, of expectations. Most people don't want to ban character death from other people's tables, and most people, likewise, don't want to play a game where nothing bad ever happens. Every table is different and wants different things, which leads me to the inevitable conclusion to all of this, which is Session Zero. For those of you who aren't familiar, Session Zero refers to a D&D group meeting before they start playing to set expectations. The goal of Session Zero is to make sure everyone knows what the game will be like, and to introduce any mechanics, safety tools, or house rules that you might be using. There are so many different ways that people handle Session Zero, and I know that not everyone is going to want to use or feel comfortable using the same sets of safety tools. I am not here to tell you what tools to use or what boundaries to set, but I am here to remind you that if you want your game to go well, if you want everyone to have fun, it is absolutely necessary that you all be on the same page about what kind of game, what kind of content, and what kind of consequences you're okay with. Some people really do want every combat to be deadly. They really do want to lose multiple PCs in a single campaign. Maybe they want psychological horror, maybe they would enjoy a game where their character is tortured. But not everyone is going to want that. Some people don't want to play the kind of game where you need two backup characters in your pocket at any given time. None of these types of players are wrong, but they can be wrong for each other. It's a lot like kink, honestly. The pain is only okay when everyone has consented to it. One of the things I think is important to set up in a session zero is a system or expectation for player feedback. This might be a safety tool like the X card, which is a card with a big X on it, and if anyone is ever uncomfortable with what's happening in the game, they can just touch the card, and everyone will move on, no questions asked. I'll link to a bunch of safety tool resources in the description because there are a ton of great options. These kind of formal safety tools are especially helpful for groups that don't know each other very well, or for players who might not feel comfortable being open at the table about their boundaries. But you know your own table best, and some tables don't need that kind of formality, as long as players are comfortable and able to give feedback before, during, and after games. I also want to say it's never too late to have a session zero. The standard is to do it before a campaign begins, but if your group skipped that step, there is no harm in doing it now. In fact, in long-running campaigns, campaigns, I think it's a good idea to have occasional check-ins, just to make sure everyone's still on the same page. Now, I want to be clear, there are absolutely DMs who do not have players' best interests at heart, and players who are like that too. If a DM and their players really do feel like they're each other's enemies, that's a problem. And you shouldn't feel like you need to accept that as normal and just keep playing. Ask yourself, why are you playing D&D? What do you want to get out of it? Chances are the answer isn't personal drama with somebody over a tabletop game. I have a video all about handling conflicts at your D&D table, if it's something that you think you want to try and talk about, but I also want to remind you that you can leave a game if it's not right for you. That is your decision and no one else's. So. What am I saying about adversarial DMs? I guess what I'm saying is that the balance is different at every table. It's okay to want a really brutal game, and it's okay to want a really soft one. The key is finding the table that wants what you want. And no matter what you think is the right way to play D&D, if some of the people at your table are miserable, something needs to change. In short, hey! Try to be nice to each other. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so the YouTube robots know that I have value as a person, and I will see you next Wednesday.